Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Thought Collective Podcast. back again with uh, our normal scheduled content with co-host Darlering. How you guys doing? How are you? I'm back. Good to have you back, man. Two, mm-hmm. two podcast episodes in a month. It's, it's unheard of for the show. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm super glad you were able to pump another one out, though. Yeah. I really was. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to try to um, get a little more... Uh, We'll be proactive about finding guests, you know. Yeah. Maybe not an every month thing, but more frequently. I like it, man, because I like giving artists a platform to talk about what they've got going on. I like talking to people, you know, whether that be music or not. Music's good for me because that's you know that's what I know most. So like having Don on there, oh yeah, was nice. But um, like getting someone else, like because like, I kind of like when you were doing Epi on Royal. Yeah. Um, where it was just like something that wasn't what we are doing um, yep. i thought that was kind of cool yeah. just to be able to sit down and listen so i think that's what we're going to probably do is we'll have our scheduled you know one a month our scheduled main show and then have like some kind of interview style for like local people or right anyone around here that wants to like really talk about what they're doing kind of helps create brand awareness a little bit too oh like, yeah anytime i seem to put out an episode with like someone else like they've got their buddies that seem to come to me message me telling me that they checked it out or subscribed to it or oh, whatever yeah. so i think that's a good way to kind of help grow it as well yeah um but yeah uh it's early i mean oh yeah i'm still trying to drink my coffee you got tim hortons here yes i do mr <laughs> timmy what uh you drink it black or how do you like your coffee yeah so like i was in line and i thought it was kind of funny um you got like all these like grown men standing in front of me and they're getting like their frappuccinos or whatever and their special <laughs> shots and this one guy in front of me is like yeah can i get like coffee with like three creamers and like some sugar <laughs> and i'm just like and you know they're like trying to be all hard and whatnot like they're like they're fighters and i'm just like yeah can i just get it black and it, can you put some ice cubes in it so i can drink it now yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then i like they're still waiting on their order and i grab my coffee and i'm out and like see you guys later oh dude that reminds me um <clears throat> I went to this restaurant in Royal Oak with Rachel Mm -hmm. um, probably about a year ago. And they've got all this vegan food, so she wanted to try it out. Yeah. But it's like, uh, it kind of feels more like a bar. I mean, they they call it a restaurant, but it looks more like just a bar. What was it called? I think it was called Ale Mary's, maybe. Okay, no. Yeah. I could have swore I was in Royal Oak and I found it was. It was like an upstairs like restaurant but it was more of a bar i think it was like one of those restaurants where they'll like at a certain time they just turn it into a bar okay kind of like the pound yeah oh i got you yeah yeah i know this place it was cool the food was good but there is like this vegan milkshake she wanted to try but she got something to drink too so she's like why don't you go ahead and order this milkshake and i was like you know whatever so i ordered this milkshake man and they bring it out and it's got like you know cookie crumbles on top it just looks like super like I don't know. Super fancy. like yeah, fancy. Mm-hmm. Then I look around and there's like all these guys drinking beer and I got this milkshake <laughs> and I'm like, oh, dude, I kind of feel a little weird right now. Oh, I was like, dude. Rachel, you'd be drinking this for me. Oh no, dude, I do that when I used to go out <laughs> to the bars and whatnot. They're like, what do you want? I'm like, the fruitiest thing you got. Yeah. And then I'll stand there <laughs> drinking it, trying to be super hard. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> drinking it through my straw. <laughs> oh, fuck I mean, me. back in the day, yeah, like it was. I think when I was younger, it was like. It, you had to look cool. Yeah. Now it's like, I don't care. It tastes good. It re- yeah, it really doesn't matter. The reason why I drink coffee black, though, is because, like, I just don't need that extra stuff. Plus, I can drink more of it. Yeah. Like, when I was doing cream and sugar, and I remember I went, I dropped cream, and I just went straight to sugar, and then I went to kale. Or not kale. Wow. You got me talking. <laughs> uh, cane sugar. Oh. And, you know, and then I just cut it all out, and I, I felt better after drinking coffee. Yeah, it really? tastes horrible, but yeah. after a while, I get used to it. And is it, um, I mean, is it just to kind of wake wake you up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. Because if not, then I'm just kind of like sluggish all day. Really? Yeah. 
I like coffee, but I'm not a big coffee drinker, and I really am not a fan of it black. So I guess I don't like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I drink but, coffee, I like it, but I don't. Yeah. Nope. It's funny, man. Like once you switch to black, it's different. It's a different feeling. Yeah. Do you? Uh, um, I mean, I know you're drinking Tim Hortons, but like, if you make coffee at home, are you someone that goes for like a dark roast, or do you kind of like lighter, medium? Roast? I like a lighter. Yeah. 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 So that's the that's the other thing. So like, when you would drink coffee with all that other stuff in it, you can't tell the difference between the coffees. Like, sure. I didn't matter. I was like, yeah, dude, it's just coffee, whatever. Right. But now switching to black it's like okay you can definitely tell a difference yeah but it's kind of like a guy who smokes cigarettes like they just want the nicotine Mm -hmm. you just want the caffeine i just want the caffeine (laughs) just give it to me yeah uh i've tried tea it's just uh, it's a different like it's a different caffeine yeah it really is i like tea i I there's a period of time i was drinking tea like every day pretty regularly but i go in and out same with coffee it's just like i'll go through a phase where i'll drink it more and then you know nothing at all and i don't know i'm not consistent with my beverage choices you know yeah no tea tea would make me as soon as i start drinking it i can't even finish it i gotta go to the bathroom really at least with coffee i was like okay i can do you like the flavor of tea though um so i grew up on black tea Mm -hmm. uh green's good and then when me and my wife were going to uh we were doing a lot of road trips so we would stop up at uh like bigby and she would get um peppermint oh okay yeah but she would ruin it i'm sorry but she would ruin it with honey oh and it, it, that's it's, a weird that's she liked weird. it I, it's fine <laughs> see i liked it just plain because it kind of tastes like warm pool water and <laughs> i don't care like that's i used to swim a lot and yeah you drink pool water when you swim and it does it tastes like <laughs> delicious pool water and it was awesome oh my god man <laughs> It's and too that's really for this. No, shit. that's staying in. <laughs> no, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's funny because I love it. She's probably gonna be sitting there listening to this, laughing like, "Oh my gosh, yes, he said it was pool water, <laughs> warm pool water." Oh, oh dude, it's so good. I uh, go find a hotel right now. <laughs> Bring your mug down to the local <laughs> pool. <laughs> yeah, just top me off, dude. <laughs> oh shit. I uh I like green tea and black tea a lot too. Yeah. I've been um just up at Meyer I get like these like variety packs of like the fruity teas and I'm mm-hmm. a big like uh citrus, like orange tea kind of person. I drink a lot of that or peach teas, things like that. Those are all pretty good. But um but it's been a while since I've drank tea, probably like a month or so now. Yeah. But but yeah. I mean since we're talking about tea so much. Uh <laughs> You like? Does anyone do black tea warm? Yeah. I've only done a cold. Yeah, no, I think I mean. I, I know do. green tea. I do warm. Yeah. Or hot, but I also drink that cold. Yeah. But I've only done black tea, just straight up ice. Okay. Yeah. Ice black tea. No, no, no sugar, dude. Right. No sweet tea. No. Ah, oh, it's like a headache. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I. Too much yeah. sugar. I'll drink sweet tea occasionally like my grandma makes it if i visit her down south but i i've never made it myself you know but yeah no the reason to wrap all the way back around the reason coffee is such a you know a big thing in my life is because it's so easy to get yeah because like when we when we do our nine to five Mm -hmm. it's right there yeah i don't have to worry about it i don't have to brew it i don't have to what did they stock that place up with is it maxwell house so they got maxwell house which is where i started yeah and I like it. Everyone hates it, um, which that's fine. Don't drink my coffee then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then they got uh, Seattle's Best. Is Nobody it? drinks that. I think it's gone now. Okay. There's decaf in there for I don't know why you want to drink a beer and not get drunk, but <laughs> they got that. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, why, why would you want to taste coffee? <laughs> Yeah, I want the taste of coffee, but I don't want to feel good about it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. And then you got uh, then you got your Starbucks, which I will bash. Oh. Starbucks. They, they keep Starbucks there, though? That's what everyone goes to. Okay. So if you ever like see me sit there and I'm mad, yeah. it's because I just poured myself the Starbucks at work. <laughs> and someone did the day It is, because people are like, oh, it's the best one. I'm like, okay, take Maxwell House, yeah. put it in there, leave it in there for five hours, then pour yourself a cup. That's Starbucks freshly brewed. Yeah. It tastes exactly like 
my coffee five hours old, <laughs> but instantly. Yeah. I don't. I don't get it. Uh, I. Uh, I think the worst cup of coffee I've ever had was by a company called Paramount. Have you ever had Paramount Coffee? No. I see their truck. I don't know if it's. Is, do they make movies too? It's spelled differently. I think. Oh, okay. I know it might be spelled. I don't know if it's spelled the same way. I see their coffee trucks drive around occasionally, um, but no, their shit was pretty gross. But I don't even mind like a cup of Folgers, honestly, if it's just like simple, whatever. Dude, just make it taste good. Right. It's not hard. Yeah. I'm trying to fancy it up. Some people go all all out though, man, with their like big coffee setups and like. Oh yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious to try, but I don't know. I'm not a fan of like the bitterness of coffee. I've got to like put something in there usually. Mm. Well, one day maybe it'll just switch. <laughs> I did it because I just wanted to be healthier. I didn't want the sugar. Yeah. I didn't want to feel bloated. Yeah. And I wanted to wake up. Right. And it's weird. I have yet. It's been years, and I've like tempted to put sugar in it, and I just, I just don't. Is it weird you out? Yeah, it's just, it's kind of like I don't know. Dude, the grossest thing not to change the subject, but sugar is if you don't mix it in well and you finish that cup of coffee and there's just sugar caked Dude, at the I love bottom. It. I love that. Oh, I'm like, oh, I don't want to throw up thinking I don't know. about that. <laughs> Maybe you can relate because you know you've cut out like meat and dairy and all that, but like. <laughs> It sounds good to put sugar in it, but then you just, I just feel horrible. So yeah. I don't, I, do, I just don't do it. Yeah. It's like, oh, that beat. No, I can't. No. I've gone so long. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> can't open that door. As far as, uh, like, uh, what would you call it? Uh, like coffee chains go. I mean, is Tim Hortons the go-to for you or, I mean. No. So, uh, our job is okay. because it's free. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No. Um. Honestly, whatever's close. Okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm not really into like you know brands. Like that tasted horrible. But whatever. It's, it's, it's <laughs> it the did the job. Um, surprisingly, I, I I don't think I. McDonald's was okay. Oh there's, yeah. There's only one problem about McDonald's though, man. What's that? It's the hottest coffee around. Oh. Nothing's hotter. Yeah. Yeah, like. I remember I, I went to go do. Um, we were shooting a short film over at uh, Dalton's house, yeah. one of you know my first short films, and uh, I stopped up at McDonald's right before I, sh- I got there, and it took like an hour and a half to be able to drink it. Really? And, yeah, and I even poured some out and watered it down. Oh <laughs> it just God. was so fucking hot. Holy smokes. I was like, dude, I want to drink this. Yeah. But, I mean, it was okay. It was free. I mean, they have the famous lawsuit about that lady getting... Severely burnt Dude, off. Dude, I don't right? know how you make it that hot. Yeah. They're pulling it off the burner and it's still boiling. I know, you know? right? <laughs> They're like, here you go. It destroys the cup they put it in. But it, I did. It was it was funny because I didn't even pay for that cup of coffee. I, like, walked in there. It oh. was, yeah, it was, I was there very early because we were trying to get the shoot done mm-hmm. relatively early because I think we had to go set up at um, the, you know, lunchroom at our job, so... I got there, I think, at like 7 in the morning. Okay. Which isn't early for McDonald's, but that area, I think it was, because there's like on a Saturday, there was like no traffic. Yeah. Um, but, anyways, I walked in there, and you can tell, like, I'm standing there and I'm waiting, and nobody's serving me. And they're all in the back just talking, and they're like, oh. nobody's wanting to work. And I'm just like, uh, and I'm so tired that I'm not going to say anything. Right. So I just waited for my cup of coffee. Guy comes up finally after, I think after like five minutes. I think I was sitting there for like five minutes. Ugh. He's like, what do you need? I'm like, large black coffee. Yeah. He came back and he went, here you go. And then he walked in the back and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked out. I'm like, whatever, dude. He just like gave it to me. He's like, I want to do your shit right now, right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so if you're going to get McDonald's coffee, make sure you get it free. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best way to get it. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, let's transition a little bit into, you know, what we've been doing. Yeah, we can, uh, so we kind of got that out, you know. Yeah. Um, talk about our uh, I mean, you've month been, recap. Yeah. I mean, I know you've been putting together a video. Yesterday was a big work day for you. you yeah. Got done. So I think what I'm going to start doing is mm-hmm. instead of um, having a whole month to, 
you know, really get some stuff done. I'm just going to procrastinate until like the day before we shoot this video and get everything done. So I have something to talk about because last month yes. we decided, Hey, let's go skateboarding and get everything we need to do. And then we're going to shoot that podcast. Yes. Same day. Right. So I, whatever. No, I got, you know, I got, I got a lot going on in the life. Uh, all good things, mm -hmm. nothing bad. Um, you know, we got, our fourth kid coming so we right. got that going november us. right yeah it's, the... gonna, it's it's gonna be right around november yeah um probably late november which i feel bad for our nine to five because everybody and their mom is off for hunting and i'm gonna come in and be like boom week off out see out you there, later yeah. are so, you taking is it two weeks or is it just a week uh i think yeah it's only five days but normally we can take more okay but i'm probably only gonna get five days uh so i so anyways we got that going on um, and just, I'm trying to work as much as possible. So mm -hmm. I work obviously the two jobs and then try to, you know, bust out photography and videography and podcasts and everything else on the side. So, right. Yeah. That's why I'm here super early. Yeah. That's why I'm over here. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. I, I'm excited. I know that you've been kind of putting together vlogs now. You yeah. Kind of start slowly doing some of that stuff, which is cool. Um, I like watching that kind of stuff. So I'm excited to see you post stuff like that too. Yeah. So it came to me like when I was working that second job, um, I was just, you know, doing my, my duties and I'm like, you know what, I'm really getting sick and tired of not, you know, being able to create anything. And I keep saying that it's due to not having the time or whatnot to shoot. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. And I'm like, I have my phone. I have that pro app that can actually like adjust shutter speed, uh, focus and you know, everything I need real camera but it's in my pocket i'm like it's not gonna be right. the best quality but if i could just get video out there something it's something yeah. so i decided to start doing stuff like that and i think i'm gonna do like a couple video weekends because i can't I don't, I don't have enough going on in one day right that makes sense so i'm gonna do stuff like that and then uh i also me and my wife started last night um i really miss playing video games and like kind of doing commentary so we're going to probably do a let's play on the last of us yeah that can build going into the yeah. last of us too which is what february i think i yeah. saw because i mean if my wife ain't gonna sit there and watch me play like apex or anything yeah well yeah, yeah. but she likes horror movies she likes good stories yeah. that was one of the best story games that's ever yeah. that's the thing that really won it for me a story was you know it leaves you thinking about it for quite a while after you know I, I really hope that they do the second one justice, you know. So do you know when The Last of Us came out? Well, was it a PlayStation 3 release initially? See, I played it after it was remastered for PlayStation 4 because I didn't have a PlayStation 3. So, um, so that's probably been what? Just I, just think of a year. I looked it up yesterday. Uh, I, I know what year it released. Um, Is it like oh, 2010? No, so it was... Which, I mean, I'm glad you thought it was longer. Um, no, it was 2013 as they released it. So okay. I'm glad they're taking their time. Yeah, they need to. Because it, you, can't, like you can't come out with a game like that and just wait. Yes. Right. No way. Yeah. No way. It would have been horrible. Yeah. But, so yeah, that's what my recap was just... You know, trying to make more content, try mm -hmm. to sit down with you as quick as possible, right? Um, and have something to talk about. And besides that, that's what I've been doing. That's good, man. I I, I think that the video game thing is cool too. I know I've got some buddies that want to do like more streaming based stuff as well, and like it's a it's a cool avenue to to pursue. Just you know, so many people are watching that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, I watch a fair amount of it. You know, like uh, Detroit Become Human. You know, I, I good game. Spent I got so sucked into watching gameplay for that. Like you just went and played it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have to play it. I watched oh. like the whole game. I mean, I did download it. I think it was what was it free? Yeah, it was, was like it? a month or two. Yeah, a month. Yeah, it was PlayStation's a... free game. So I downloaded that and I got sucked into that again for a little bit. But uh, no, I watched like basically the whole game's worth of gameplay when yeah. that first came out, and like the music itself was incredible. I think they had three composers that. Uh, wrote music for each character because you know you follow three yeah. characters through that game so each composer kind of took on 
a role of a character, which I thought was really unique too. Um, you know, some of the themes in that uh, game just get stuck in my head, and um, I, I I don't know. I think musically that was probably a reason that game sucked me in so much, and the fact that it's you know here in Detroit or Michigan, you know. Yeah. I think that they paid a pretty they paid good attention to detail. There's things in that game that, like, oh, I know where that's at. Yeah, they have the landmarks. Yes. I thought it was pretty cool. I think I noticed, too, that they had um, some of the expressways in in different streets. I think they were pretty, uh, like, detailed about, too, because I'm like, oh, like, it's not I I really wish uh, I I knew more, uh, because, like, we all know Detroit. We've all been down there, but, like, I feel like some of the, like, areas, I was like, man, I really wish... I knew Detroit like in and out, so I can yeah. really pinpoint. Besides, like just main landmarks and whatnot, right? Like side streets and whatnot would have been cool. We were just down there yesterday. Um, we visited Rachel's family, which they're probably twenty minutes outside of Detroit. But we went into Detroit to get food. There's this place called Pie Size. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it, but this this awesome pizza place. Where is it at? It's because um, there's a lot of awesome pizza places. It's it's kind of by Wayne State. By the DIA, if you know oh, where that's okay. at. No. Kind of that general area of Detroit. Um, but, yeah, it was it was delicious, man. We stocked up. They have some good vegan pizza. They've got, you know, pizza for everyone, you know, everyone but oh, they've got cool. a good extensive list. It kind of felt like this, like, little hipster place, though. Oh, really? You know I mean, it was kind of cool, yeah. But um, Yeah, the only good pizza place that I knew about was the one that's right across from Pegasus on Greek Town. Okay. It's oh, the Chicago pizza. Yes, I think I know what you're where talking about. Where it was about. so it was so deep dish, it took me four days to eat it. Oh my gosh! And it wasn't a big pizza. Like it was only like maybe like a ten inch or something. Yeah. But it took me like four days to eat that thing. Yeah. I felt horrible eating it. Man, because it was just so big. Yeah. <laughs> do you have? A, I mean, do you have a favorite kind of pizza as far as like? Uh, favorite kind of pizza, really the best pizza. Is the one that you can eat with like no toppings on it. You just take the pizza as it is. And the best I've ever had is out on Grand Haven. Mm. It's called Portobello's, a little Italian restaurant next to uh, the boardwalk. And it's butted up to like an old piano factory. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so upstairs every single day of the week, every time, at least every time I've gone there, there's a wedding hosted. Really? Yeah, no matter what. Like I even like took my wife there. And I said, hey, let's go up to the top. I bet there's a wedding going on. As soon as we got up there, sure there was enough. a full reception going on. I'm like, I told you, it's always there. Yeah. And they have really good Italian food, but I, I go there for their pizza, and it's relatively cheap, which I was surprised. That's it's cool. like 10 bucks, and yeah. I get it just cheese, and I eat it with a fork and knife. Do you? And it's, you don't need nothing on it. And yeah. I'm like, that's, that's, that's what makes good a good pizza. pizza. Yeah. If you don't need a million toppings on it, you know, to just destroy it. It's like finding a good cup of coffee. You, if you, you can drink it just the way it is. Yeah. Best coffee. Dude, you should try pie size, man. We try, they, they put cheese on it for us, which was yeah. made from cashews, which was kind of interesting. I would like to try something. It was like delicious, that. man. They had I've a few different had. cheeses, but cashew sounded interesting, and that's what they recommended, too. Mm. It's weird. They did, like, cashew cheese bread, too, so we kind of got, like, cheesy bread sticks with it. Oh. Uh, yeah. So sidetracking uh you got a vegan pizza does that have like real bread yeah yeah their crust is all so it's so it's not like gluten-free or anything they might have that option but i mean i know we didn't we didn't look for that but i'm sure i'm sure that they do i mean they kind of seem accommodating to a lot of different like allergies and whatnot right so i wouldn't be surprised i wouldn't put it past them well that's cool i might have to check that out yeah Plus, I mean, I don't know if you're into museums, but like yes. the DIA is right around the corner, so make a day of it. Oh it yeah, then I know where it's. Yeah, I've been to the, I've been to the DIA. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool place. I need to need to go back. Yeah. I really do. I I love that place, man. Like, we went. I went with uh with Don or whatever. Um, probably a year ago, and aside from that, I haven't been back. But you know, I think it's just a really really neat museum they've got a lot there a little a lot of different time period pieces as well as like some pretty famous works too it's yeah that's a cool place and it's not that but you know not that expensive to get in no no i can't remember how much it was but it was, it was doable yeah i think now that my kids are a little bit older i might take them there yeah you don't want I, you didn't want to take kids there they're gonna be like what's this and just touch it and it's like dude 
great. Right. I'm going to jail. <laughs> so we kind of talked about what I've done and I'm just, you know, rearranging the house, getting ready for the kids. Uh, in my downtime, I'm doing, you know, what I can with photography and videography. But let's switch over to what you've done because I'm pretty sure you've done a lot more than me. Um, yeah. A lot more exciting things. Well, I finally am able to talk about, um, you know, a project I worked on for Spotify. I kind of like briefly touched on it last month, but it's live now. Went okay. live probably a few days ago. And so, yeah, I put together uh, music for this commercial for Spotify. They're rolling out this thing called Spotify for Brands. And there's a marketing piece that they needed music for, so I was able to write custom music for that. Um, they, uh, I wrote, you know, it was five five pieces of music for this like ninety second spot, yeah. and uh, it's kind of interesting because they didn't use all the music I wrote. They used, you know, what uh, they wanted. What they wanted, right? Which was different for. Um, each commercial, because like they've got the commercial and it runs in the U.S. and that's different than the commercials they run, let's say in like Asia or yeah. Europe. So like the U.S. commercial used a song, but then um, the other ones used a few of the songs I wrote. Yeah. And then I think they must have just replaced the stuff that they weren't using with like other library music, which was kind of interesting. It's cool to hear it. I mean, I would have loved to have every song I wrote yeah. on that commercial, but hey, you worked hard on it. But yeah, I think, you know, it wasn't so much that um, I couldn't have, but I think that the deadline was coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm basically going back and forth with the middleman on that. And if, you know, Spotify's communicating with this company I'm working at, if there's any, like, Miscommunica miscommunication, yeah. then it's easy for them to just say no to my music because I'm not directly talking to Spotify yeah. with what they want. So it's kind of an interesting learning experience in that aspect but you know at the end of the day i'm just happy to have you know a few tracks on yeah. this commercial i mean that's and cool like you said credit. it's a lot um you got a lot overseas though like the yes. overseas spotify picked up a lot of your songs yeah i know that in the u.s market there's this scene basically the commercial is an audio commercial there's no video to it but it's uh an immersive experience where you're kind of in 90 seconds, you're walking through this character's entire day. So she'll wake up, she'll go for her morning run, comes home, takes a shower, starts cooking and preparing food for this like dinner party she's mm -hmm. having at her house. And then at the end of the day, she kind of chills out to some relaxing music. So like in 90 seconds, you're trying to write music to get the listener immersed in her, her day. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, during like the cooking scene, she puts on this podcast which is called the dissect podcast is okay. what they use they use the intro from that podcast in the u.s version of this commercial and replace the music i wrote but let's say like in the asian uh the asian commercial they don't put the podcast in there instead they just layer in the music so I wrote is the podcast that they use a like a you know an american Podcast. I believe so, yeah. I so, yeah, that's probably why. One. So, yeah, in other countries, they're like, well, we're not going to use this as a reference because nobody knows this podcast. Yeah, yeah exactly. So they're like, we'll use, you know, Grant's mm -hmm. which custom was, song for that yeah. part. Which was cool because I think that was probably one of my favorite pieces of music I wrote for the entire thing. So. Was the kitchen? Yeah. That, yeah. That and there's this, like, chill out, uh, chill out track at the end of the day, which is kind of interesting because I probably wrote that chill out track, like, <laughs> quite a few times. You know, I'd write it and it was, like... Uh, this is cool, but it sounds too, uh, like, stock music. Yeah. Like, we want it to sound like something, like, someone would actually sit down and listen to. So, and yeah, so they doing, said that to you, didn't they? Yeah, and I'm going through all these, like, reiterations of this song, and I finally get something that they like, yeah. and then I listen to the final spot, and it's, like, the first thing I wrote anyways. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> so it's Like, funny. we don't want it to sound like stock music, and then all of a sudden they're like, we're just going to use stock music. Yeah. So let's use it because it sounds like stock. And you're like, you know what? Pay me. Don't care. Yeah. At the end of the day, you get a paycheck, and that's and all that matters. That's all that matters. And then now you can use that as, you know, uh, kind of like a spot on your, your website. Like, hey, yeah. look, I work with Spotify. Yeah. I'm growing. Right. At the, yeah, so, it's just good, uh, good for the old portfolio, if you will. Yeah. But uh, aside from that, man, like, you know, I've been writing library music, but I also did some other customs. I don't, 
I, I can't say what they're for. Um, a trailer for Until this movie. Until next month, maybe. Yeah, if it comes <laughs> out. But uh, they did release tra- a trailer for this movie that I pitched for. Uh-huh. I don't know if that was... I don't know if that was a sign that I didn't get it because this particular trailer didn't oh, have okay. my music in it. Um, but it looks like a pretty good movie. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll be able to talk about that more later on. That's cool. But aside from that, man, I don't know. Just, yeah, I mean, I've, I've noticed just every day you're, you're, you know, you're creating something. I try to. I mean... And then recently, I think you brought up to me, they were like, you found a new way to do something. Yes. In... You know the workflow you already have, which just blew my mind. Yes, yeah. yeah. If you want to talk more about that, since I have no idea, I would love to talk about it. I, <laughs> I know, I know it might be confusing and complicated to explain, but I can try. Um, I sent, there's this uh, like producer or like mixing engineer is probably the proper term, but his name's Andrew Sheps. He's done music from. I think people like Lady Gaga all the way to like Green Day or Linkin Park. So he's got like a pretty extensive list of uh, clients he's mixed music for. Um, but he has this technique and it's called the rear bus technique, which I recently learned about. Mm-hmm. And basically what you do is uh, you take everything except the drums and you throw it to this bus, like this compressor bus, and you like compress all your tracks on a separate um, compressor, you know, minus the drums, and slowly blend it in with the full mix. And uh, I think it's really meant to help vocals pop, probably. Um, But it just added so much life and excitement to the music I was writing on. It's kind of hard to explain unless you sit and listen to it. But, like, you'd take that compressor off and listen to what you initially had, and then you'd put that compressor back on and like it just sounded like your mix all of a sudden had like this additional like just life in it. And that must have just like opened so many doors for you. It did. Like it started I don't know, I think Andrew Sheps is definitely known for like routing his buses. Like he's got like a bus for everything. Like he's got another technique about, you know, distorting drum sets, like putting distortion on drum sets and yeah. throwing that. I think he calls it the dirt bus. So if you want this like grit to your drums, you throw that onto a separate bus and it's all stuff like I knew how to do, but just like listening to a professional talk about how they use how they apply those plugins to their chain was just like very eye opening for me. Cause like, you know, I think first and foremost, I'm like, uh, a composer and I write music but with what I do I need to learn how to effectively mix and sometimes master songs too and that's something that like I'm learning I'm, I've am i been learning a lot about over the past few years but it's something I'm by no means an expert on I'd say yeah. but in time uh, I mean yeah I mean I think the stuff yeah. I've been doing is met a lot of publisher standards which mm-hmm. is you know why I've been doing what I've been doing but you know, I listen to my stuff compared to other stuff, and I definitely see that there's room for growth, which yeah. is exciting. But you don't get intimidated. You're not like, okay, you know, I'm not good enough. I can't create. I can't publish anything. Yeah. Which, I mean, is I think for in, a lot of people hard. Yeah, initially there's probably some self-doubt if you hear something that's just, like, amazing. But I think for me, with my headspace, I'm usually pretty quick to jump out of that and just that's good. actually analyze a song and try to di- dissect what makes a mix good and what makes it poor and how can I apply that to what I'm doing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, Cause you know, I write a lot of different styles of music and all those styles of music are going to have different ways to mix them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You got to, f- but it's basically just balancing out and smoothing out frequencies or whatever. Just making everything sound uniform, like a song rather than a piece of music with a bunch of, elements that are popping out in a yeah. distracting way you want it to sound uniform you want it yeah, to sound like, like all a record mixed in. right yep. yeah yeah i know you've talked about things like i know you've had friends that have put together music and you said like the vocal sometimes yeah. sounded different it didn't sound like it went yeah with i had to track. ask you that yeah i had a buddy who was making uh just kind of like you know cover cover songs mm-hmm. and he's got a good setup i mean he's got a good mic he's got the macbook pro like 2018 running good software i mean he was doing everything had his uh i guess mixer yeah the little 
nap things. I'm, right. I'm so new to this still. <laughs> um, anyways, I was like, oh, dude, that's sweet. Let me hear some of it. And it's like the music sounded great. Yeah. Like, I love the music. It's just when he came in, it sounded like he was standing kind of like a karaoke where mm-hmm. he's a, in front of the music. And I'm like, yeah. how does he, how do you get into it? Yeah. Like where you actually sound like maybe you're, you know, in the middle of the band. Right. Not just singing karaoke to it. Yep. So, yeah, that was... Yeah, that's that's the uh, the art of mixing is just knowing how to what tools to use to place yourself in certain spots. You know, give it this three dimensional sound, make yeah. it captivating, but make it sound like it's glued together, like it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, and that you're just singing on top of a pre made track or whatever. You know. Yeah. So is that something easily done, or do you need like all the tracks to be able to blend in? Could you uh, just take a full song that's already done and somehow get yourself into it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a karaoke yeah, song. You can. It's, it's probably always easier if you have more at your disposal. Yeah. But yeah, sure. There's definitely a lot of techniques you could use depending on what you're going for. Like using like compressors is a big thing, but okay. Um, like reverbs and delays that kind of helps make it sound like you're standing in a space, which kind of gives the illusion that you're more probably mixed in it. There's tons okay. of tools. EQs. Um, you know, making sure frequencies aren't clashing with each other, and you sound like you're in a a certain frequency pocket that complements the rest of the song that'll make it sound like you're sitting in there yeah, as well yeah, that'd be fun to try it is man it's... i've tried collaborating with my buddy to see if we could you know because he's more into wanting to do stuff like that mm-hmm. but like i said i don't think he knows how to mix yeah it properly yeah. but i don't know i've always had this like idea that it'd be kind of cool to uh like sing just try see yeah. how it sounds yep because i mean nowadays like there's, you know, you listen to singers, and some of them are just not that good. Right. It's like, but they're doing it. Yeah. So I'd like to just see if we can do it. It's, uh, it's, you know, I've spent all this time learning about mixing and stuff, but then, like when I was doing the Spotify ad, for example, mm-hmm. I wrote the music, but we also had a separate mix engineer for the whole project as well. Oh, yeah. And man, listening, what he, he listening can do. to what he would do, I was like, oh my God, like... Like, holy smokes, like, you took what I did, blended it in with all the sound effects and, like, yeah. all that. But, like, I don't know, man. I was blown away. I was like, that's so much better than anything I think I could do at this yeah. point in time. Now, is, like, something that you want to be able to do in the future? Be able to mix your own stuff? Or do you just like the creating part of it? Because isn't somebody that mixed like that, that, like, that's just their job. They don't create nothing. Times, yeah. They're almost like a video editor. They don't shoot nothing. They just... Give them everything, and they will put it all together for you. I think, I mean, yeah, first and foremost, I love writing the music the most. But I think it's not a matter of working up where I could just do one thing. I think for what I'm doing, it's so crucial to just be able to do everything. Yeah. Because, I mean, depending on the project, man, sometimes I've got a day to turn things around. If I'm writing a song, and that takes almost a day itself and then sending it to a mix engineer like it just slows the process down so i think that there's going to be some times where like hiring a real mix engineer is going to be the best route but mm-hmm. sometimes i just don't have the time or the luxury to yeah to pay someone to so do you'll that be so you'll be learning more how to do that yeah yep That'd so cool. but yeah um but i think i don't know man like uh, looking at october i mean we're into october now I mean, are other things that you're... I mean, you've got the Let's Play, like the commentary. Yep. Is there any other projects that you're really trying to, to yeah, push so on? Yeah, so switching into what we're you know planning on doing this month and what to be expected for. Um, I'm going to keep pushing that Let's Play because that works on so many levels. Yeah. Like, I get to play video games. Love it. I get to spend time with my wife. Love that. Makes her happy. Right. Um, I get to create... I get to make, you know, a video. I get to edit it. I get to do that passion. And, um, you know, I get to have my wife listen to a really cool story. So, I mean, it just works on multiple levels for me. So, I'm excited about that. I'm going to keep doing the vlogging, which, like I said, I'm not a vlogger. Right. I'm not big into vlogging. It's kind of, but I think it's it's one of those things that you just need to do. Okay. It's going to push me in a direction because I'm not comfortable. Yes. Shooting vlogs. Yeah. Uh, I really am not. But I think if I if I do more of it, I'll get more comfortable. Just like this. Like when we first started, it was kind of intimidating to sit here at the podcast with, you know, all the gear and, and try to talk. But I think after now, it's, it's what, a third time? 
Yeah, it, it just feels so much easier. It, that's yeah, exactly. like it's just like there's like a level of calmness. Like I'm not worried about you know what I'm saying or breathing. It just flows perfectly. So that's what I'm gonna do with the vlogs. Um, also, we live in Michigan, so. I'm waiting for the leaves to actually do what they're supposed to do <laughs> right. because right now it's cold, it's cold and it's still, still green. green. <laughs> yeah. So I have a client that wants to do a fall shoot. Oh. And I'm really excited about that. Yeah. I want to be able to, um, you know, deliver what she's looking for. And the weather is just being crazy. So, like, I want to be able to do a fall shoot where they're not wearing coats. <laughs> but nobody wants to have this unsaturated green image. <laughs> they want some color pop, right? Sure. So that's kind of where I'm going to be sitting at, hopefully in October. Like, I don't want to go into November. I really hope I can get it done in October. I just, with the photo shoot, I'm, I'm just waiting for the leaves to just not be in so Thing. crazy. Yeah. But who knows? You're um, going to have a, a tight window too, man. It seems oh, like they God. change and then two weeks later there's They'll no fall. leaves on this. Yeah, it's winter. And that's the thing. Like My wife just let me know um, why I'm probably going to be wanting to move to Alaska because she says it's going to be 80 this week. In Alaska? No. Oh. Here. Oh, again. oh, I see what you're... Yeah. Like we, just, we just hit 80 and now we're down to 50. Yeah. There was like, what, two days we were at 80 and then the next day it dropped to 60 degrees. I didn't know I was going to get back into the I know. 80s. She said she was looking at the... Uh, this is a whole off her, what she said. I'll have to you know reference it, but she was talking sure. about she was talking about um, this this coming week is gonna pop back up to eighty, and <laughs> like we don't have hurricanes, we don't have tornadoes, which we do, but we don't. Right. We don't have tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes. We don't have big bugs. Yeah. We just have this thing called climate change where it is so drastic. <laughs> you have to keep a coat on you at all times <laughs> and a pair of shorts. Yeah. If you don't know what it's going to be like. <laughs> and then we're going to school in, you know, freezing cold. Yeah. And then you leave, it's like short weather. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, my God. But no, this, this year... <laughs> This year and last year has just been crazy. I hear it's supposed to be a brutal winter here, though. Well, it's because we had... A, yeah, it was funny. They said we had a brutal summer, which it was bad. Yeah. That one day I left early. Yeah. It was so humid. Mm -hmm. It was like you were in water. That's the killer. Yeah, that's the killer here. And they were like, no, it's going to be a brutal winter. I'm like, what's... I'm like, we just had a brutal winter. Yeah. What, what do you mean worse? <laughs> Uh, that's the thing. That's the thing I could do without, man. I don't mind the cold so much as the snow. Yeah, I think what like I'm so upset right now. I'm just <laughs> so upset. Like Michigan, four seasons, no, two, and they and they keep fighting each other. Summer, each, winter, summer, winter, and it, when is it gonna do that? It's gonna go between, you know, Monday and Tuesday. What are you getting Monday? Summer. What's Tuesday? Winter. What's Wednesday? Summer again. Yeah. Boom. Yep. Welcome to Michigan. Where's fall and spring? Doesn't exist. It's, it's like, gonna rain while it's cold. It's like winter six months out of the year. Oh my god. Dude. Not really, but it feels that way a lot of times. Like, I love the cold, but you know, gradually bring me into it. Yep. Gradually. I wanna feel good weather for at least we I need, don't know. We need like fifty degree weather for like a couple months. I mean, this, the last this weekend has actually been nice because for once I didn't have to have the heat or the AC on. Yeah, okay. But that's what's getting annoying. It's like, what's it going to be today? Oh, I'm going to turn the heat on. Yeah. What's it going to be tomorrow? I got to turn the AC back on. How's the studio feel today? I mean, it's not it actually horrible. feels pretty good. I mean, I you know, it'd be nice to have airflow, which if there was an ability to get to that window, <laughs> which there's not ever. Yeah. Does that window even open? It does open. But have you ever opened it? Uh, no, I've never opened it. No, because you'd have to do a parkour move to get over there. Yeah, climb. This is the way I've got this studio set up. <laughs> is, uh works for me, but does not work well to... Mm -hmm. It's like right in front of the window. Yeah. And this desk is just massive, and it's but just a it, pain to get back there. But that's the difference between, you know, a guy who's creating music and maybe a video editor. I mean, yes, you could do less with both and more with both, but... Yeah. I don't need to put a keyboard yeah, anywhere near my desk. I mean, honestly, I don't need a desk this massive, too. I mean, like, no. I got rid of that third monitor, so I've got all Thank this you. real estate that's, like, not needed. <laughs> but, like, 
I don't know. I, I like it. I've though. got it. I, I built it for like yeah. maybe 150, 200 bucks. And I, I look at other desks that are what I would ideally like in a desk. No. But it's like 800 bucks. And I'm like, I don't want to spend $800 on a desk. I'd rather build one. But I don't feel like building another desk right now either. I feel like no, I got I, too much shit. You know? I like it. I mean, when you move, it's going to be a pain. Yeah, I'll probably just, yeah. Call me. Yeah. Bro, I need your help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move my desk. <laughs> Dude, it was such a pain to get this desk in this spot. Oh, I bet. Like, the doorway here is so narrow that, mm. like, getting this... I had to take off the, uh... What do you, what do you call the... Trim. Yes, I had to take off part of the trim Just to, to get it, to get it in. Doorway. Yeah. Well, you know, it's going to be sweet when you have your, you know, you finally land, like, a new place or whatnot, whether it's in L.A., yeah. Or it's somewhere here, and say you can have like your own office space with like two double doors that open up, oh, so you can beautiful. bring everything in. <laughs> right. Oh man, that'd be sweet. Yeah, it's the dream. That is the dream. So we talked about kind of what my plan is. What is your big, you know, goals for, for October? October. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a lot of just keep on keeping on uh i just keep trucking i think i don't know if it'll be october or not but i know that well, it'll probably be october i know that when this spotify check comes in which will be in the next two or three weeks i was told um i'm gonna i'm gonna upgrade the computer so that's probably my big goal i think we should shoot a video of you upgrading to be able to add on yeah i think be that'd cool. be cool for your you know the channel or whatnot so i don't know if that's so much a goal but i think it's going to be a, a big change for me in yeah. this month and uh it'll just have a lot a lot of power to take on projects and then so just, like what do you what do you want to tell them you're upgrading oh um tech wise cause... so right now i'm using uh an imac it's a late 2015 model imac and i'm getting another imac it's like the 2019 model but the only i mean the big difference is are that um, the specs are just a lot better. Yeah. Right now, I'm running a computer that's uh, four cores of i5, mm -hmm. and this computer I'm upgrading will be eight cores of i9. Oh, okay. Um, so faster, what would that be? Faster just like CPU. gigahertz. Yes, yeah. Uh, more yeah. cores. I'm trying, I can't remember. Might be like 3.6 gigahertz or something like that. Is this Terrible one? boost. This is 3.2, I okay, believe. Okay, so we're just going to have a faster processor with multiple cores, more, multiple threads, yeah. and then you're going to run with 64 gigs of RAM? Yes, I'm at 32. I bought this computer at 16 gigabytes of RAM. A couple years later, I put in 32 gigabytes of RAM, but when I buy this new computer, I'm just going to go up to just 64. I'm going to basically max out this yeah this i iMac. would just because like you said when you're when you're creating you get those like multiple 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 tracks and you're looking at how much ram you're using mm -hmm. and you're kind of like pushing it right so the cpu's been a killer recently too just it's just what over yeah i think it's just must be the plugins i know like sometimes with the sample libraries a lot of them use ram but i notice some cpu spikes occasionally especially with like synthesizers like i don't know if you're familiar with the name omnisphere but that's a big one i use mm -hmm. and that sometimes is a cpu hog as well so between yeah. that and the uh um the plugins like the eqs and whatnot like all that stuff like it just really starts to tax the system a bit yeah um I feel like I spend more time fighting the computer to run smoothly, you know, whether I'm freezing tracks or bouncing certain sections to audio. It's just not an efficient workflow. No. It slows me down. It, uh, frankly, just kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a great computer in itself, but I think I'm just kind of outgrowing it. Uh, as, and you know, you know as, you're only going to get better and push more, so you yes. might as well just get yeah. the right tool for the job instead of exactly i mean you've already gone long enough working around your limitations you might as well just yeah get the actual specific tool you need i'm so excited too that like these big gear purchases are a hundred percent funded by the music i've written to mm -hmm. which is which is so cool you know i'm obviously not a full-time musician yet but it just feels like i'm getting closer and closer to like making it a living you know because yeah. like i've written music for so many years and never seen a penny for any of it yeah and then know? within like the last what year 
Yeah. Things have just been, and they're just, and they're just going to keep going. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's things that, you know, I definitely am working towards and definitely things in the works that I think will uh, make a big, you know, big change in my life, hopefully. But, uh, well, but we're, yeah. We're all rooting for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And one then, day at a time. And then we'll throw you a big party. And then when I finally make it, we'll throw another party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, uh, some of the people at work, some of the bosses, whatever, keep encouraging me to, to go for it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, usually. No, they, you yeah, usually they're like, oh, yeah, you're never going to make it. You don't want them to feel like you're unreliable, like yeah. you're going to leave at any second. Like, yeah. I don't want them to feel that way, but it, it seems healthy in the sense that they just keep encouraging me to like, you know, you working on anything new, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, you think which is cool. Cause yeah. I mean, then they care about, you know, what you want to do. Right. But you keep showing them, like, hey, I'm still going to be here that's until one, that day. Right. That's one thing I love about that job, too, is, yeah. I mean, it's got, you know, it's fair share of pros and cons. Mm-hmm. But things like that, man, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, like, it makes it worth worth my time being there. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so that's cool. Not trying to go down the rabbit hole about the day <laughs> job, but it definitely is uh, inspiring and encouraging, I guess. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, man, is there anything you want to want to say before we wrap it up nope just uh we kind of hit all our points um what we plan on doing you know in the future yep. future episodes we're gonna keep doing this i think maybe we'll try to get it at the very end not going into the next month but we'll see like at the end of october is that what you're saying yeah like yeah, a, yeah because so far we've already kind of like walked into each month but that's, I mean, it's okay in a sense because, like, we kind of got a recap. But right. I was hoping to get, like, actually. I think I think that's kind of a day. good setup for us is kind of just, you know, recapping it. Unless there's something, like, specific that we're like, oh, yeah, we got to talk about this and then we do a, an yeah. additional one. But I think it's kind of a good, like, all-rounder. I used to do this thing on my website for, I probably only did it for three or four months. But I do, um, I do blog posts about just what I did that month. Mm-hmm. But I think this is kind of like a more natural, fun way to kind of talk about those things instead. I'm not a great writer. Um, so, I, you know, it was kind of a practice experiment for me, but mm-hmm. I much prefer the audio route of talking yeah. about what I've been up to and oh, what yeah. you've been up to. Plus, it's fun just sitting down and talking with someone rather than myself. I mean, I don't really like writing about myself that much. No, that's yeah. why I told you vlogging's hard because yeah. I have to talk to myself. Yes. In a sense. Yeah. Um, it is nice to have someone there to actually be able to bounce Makes a conversation smooth. off of. But I think um, I, I do like the idea of bringing in people for interviews. So if anyone, you know, wants to be able to come and, and collaborate with us, uh, whether you sit down with just Grant or, my, or both of us, yeah. um, and you want to talk about what business you're doing, you know, depending on whatever you do if you're creating and you want to just talk about what you've been doing we would definitely love to have you on here right. um what's grant what's like the best way they can get a hold of us um to be able to like collab yeah i mean I think, obviously youtube we're gonna be on youtube so if you're watching on that platform you can just comment right comment there um you know i'm on instagram all that stuff i think maybe a good way to do it too just a nice universal way is if you go to grantborland.com there's a connect tab you can just fill out the little little thing yeah. i mean i know it's aimed more at like you know if you want music work done but if you just kind of specify that you know you listen to the podcast and you want to set something up that's a good way to do it too otherwise you know message me on youtube or instagram or oh, yeah. whatever i'm, I'm kind of everywhere twitter you know yeah all that stuff it's not hard you know if you want to be on the show it's not hard to find me no know? and it wouldn't be that hard to be on the show either no no that'd so be, it'd be pretty cool so uh yeah that's about it for me that's cool man um you know for the listeners you know if you want to help our show grow as well um just leave you know a rating and comment if you're a listener on uh apple podcast if you're listening to it on youtube you know like comment subscribe all that stuff you know uh but yeah that just helps us kind of keep the ball moving in the right direction so and if you guys got any feedback on what you might want to hear a little bit different or maybe like we can have like a specific you know topic that's yeah. maybe like someone in the comments wants to talk about one episode we can yes. post that out that'd be kind of cool yeah 
yeah definitely reach out we we definitely would like to build more of a I don't know, an interaction with the audience in yeah. a sense too, you know? Because if not, we're just going to sit here and talk to each other. Right. And I, I think <laughs> it's, coffee. I mean, it's just a natural way to get things started until, you know, there's a more of a following. Um, but, you know, I know that there's definitely people listening. I, I get messages pretty frequently about, oh, really? You know, yeah. That's yeah. Sweet. Yeah. See, I, I listen to it on YouTube and I listen on the podcast, uh, Apple podcast. Yep. Like when I'm driving to work, I like to listen around and stuff. So yeah, well, that's cool that you know people are actually contacting. Yeah, I that's mean good. it's not tons of people, but I'm sure that it seems like there's probably regularly about thirty or so, thirty to forty. That's awesome. Well, yeah. you thirty are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Give so, you all thumbs up. Yeah, we're getting there, man. Under you know less than what is this episode nine? I is think. it nine? Yep. It's for me. It's three. Yep. Yeah. It's the third time I've been here. So, moving in the right direction. This is a slow building thing, you know. Oh yeah. But uh. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys, and uh, have a good one. Mm-hmm.